Hmm, wouldn't it be terrific to dig up a fortune, find the world's biggest nugget of gold, or perhaps the world's most beautiful opal? Well, if it's opal you're searching for, your search could start here in the Department of Mines and Energy in South Australia, because this is where you get a permit to go mining opals at Cooper Pedy. And mining is more than just digging a hole in the ground. You have to stake a claim, so come with me. Now, once you've filled in your application, you bring it here and you lodge it for processing. Hi. Hi. Thanks very much. And in return for your fee, you get a few things back. One of them is a set of instructions on exactly how you lodge your claim. That's important. So are, thanks very much, your plastic claim registration plates, and very important is your miner's permit. And having got all of those, we can begin. Let's go. This is the opal field at Cooper Pedy, and as you can see, the work is on. You're not allowed to stake a claim inside the town, so this is where we go. And I reckon these people over here know what they're on about. They must be digging there for good reason. I'd really like to stake my claim over there, but I can't, because that ground is already claimed. I'm not allowed to go onto there, and I can't stake a claim that overlaps one that's already there. This is as close as I can get, still will trust to luck. This is not my opal digging hole. Before I do that, I have to stake my own claim. And that's done with four pegs a bit like this, preferably thicker. You see, a claim is ideally square, and you're only allowed to have 50 metres along each side. So you put a post at each corner to mark it out. And to show which corner, you've got two things called indicator arms. That shows one side of it, that shows the other. And one of these posts has to be at each corner. Now, of course, four posts in the ground could be anybody's. So when I got my permit, I got a few things that came with it. That's the permit, and these are my plates. There's one for each peg. That's my number, that's the date when it was issued, and I have to nail one of these securely onto each of my poles. Not only that, I have to write below that the date on which I stake my claim. And the fun doesn't end there. There's a lot of stake in opal mining, and people have been known to claim jump, so as quickly as I can, I have to get this claim recognized. So, I use a compass, and I take some bearings, and I get some landmarks around here I can use. And finally, I draw a map of it, describe it, and I take that in and apply for my claim to be registered. Once that's done, there's an official record that it's mine, that it's here, and there can be no dispute. Then I can get mining. And indeed, I'd better. Because once you've staked your claim, you've got to work at a minimum of 20 hours a week, or else you can lose it. Well, that all really sounds quite a lot of work. A bit beyond you, I think, if you're just passing through here. Fortunately, there's another way to make your millions. It's called noodling or fossicking. You see, these days, most of the digging for opal is done by machines. The things are a bit like bulldozers deep underground, and they chew away at the rock face. And as they do so, they generate a lot of rubbish that's sucked up in giant vacuum cleaners and spat out on the top by these blowers. Now these people are fossicking through that because if they find streaks of colour, it means they've hit opal down below. And that's what you can do if you get permission. You can go fossicking. Now a working like that is pretty serious business. And if you find opal on that heap, they're going to want it. It is, after all, on their claim and it's theirs. But fortunately, back in Cooper PD, there are big fossicking heaps where anyone can go. It's a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack. Your luck may be in. A lot of people do find opal this way and some quite precious pieces. And it's certainly a lot better and easier than digging your own hole. Curiosity.